Hi, I'm Robert Osborne. Halloween is just around the corner, which means that ghosts, witches, and zombies are going to be in full force throughout the month here on TCM. And right now we have zombies for you in a B-budget horror film released by Columbia Pictures in 1957 called Zombies of Mora Tau. Now this isn't a movie on the same level as, say, Val Luton's I Walked with a Zombie or some of the higher grade B product from Raw RKO, Universal, and other studios, but gives a very good indication of some of the other movie competition out there in movie theaters at the same time. The plot of our movie involves a team of treasure hunters traveling to the coast of Africa in hopes of finding diamonds, which sank with their ship in the 1890s. The problem is that the men who died and went under with that treasure are still there guarding those diamonds. They are now the walking dead. Not only does the treasure hunting crew have to contend with the zombies, but the wife of the zombie captain wants those diamonds for herself in order to destroy them and restore peace to the undead. Very interesting. In the cast, you'll be seeing Allison Hayes, who one year later starred in Attack of the 50-Foot Woman, and also Greg Palmer is in it. He's a fellow who made a name for himself in a number of B-budget movies, particularly in the 1950s. This film was made by Clover Productions, which was actually the B-budget wing of Columbia Pictures. Made all sorts of movies and in every genre from 1955 to 1961. They had several cult hits along the way, such as It Came From Beneath the Sea, Earth vs. the Flying Saucers, and such non-sci-fi movies as Rock Around the Clock, which featured music by Bill Haley and his Comets. But here's one of their more typical Clover Productions, Zombies of Mora Tau, from 1957, also known in some quarters as The Dead, The Walk. Sorry, Miss Jan. Sam, I think by now you know every hole in this road. I know all the holes, Miss Jan, but on this road there's no place to go but in them. Well, it's a good thing Africa hasn't completely changed. I was afraid after ten years you'd be driving me home on a super highway with drive-ins on both sides. Nothing much has changed in this part of Africa, Miss Jan. Not in ten years. Not in fifty years. It wasn't a man. It was one of them. I'm truly sorry, Miss Jan. But I couldn't stop. There's your grandma now. She'll tell you I was right. She's waiting for you. You're trembling. We hit a man, ran over him. Not a mile down the road, Sam wouldn't stop. I saw him, ma'am, with the seaweed on him. 
He stood in the middle of the road and tried to stop the car. Get Miss Jan's things up to her room. But that man, he's badly hurt or, or dead. There's no one on the road. Remember that. I saw him. Sam saw him. He admits it. Go inside now. And freshen up, Jan. So you still believe in this voodoo? I thought it was a nightmare from my childhood. I thought everything would be different now. Later on, Jan, you'll decide for yourself. I'm sorry I had to start like this on your first night back. to a calm crossing, which we already had. The hook dragged anchor at 18 fathoms. OK, OK, lower the launch. OK, sir. No, I don't want any more things. <laughs> and here's to a million bucks in diamonds, which we're soon going to have. You're getting drunk. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> In a few days, I'm going to deck that lovely, beautiful body of yours with diamonds from head to toe. <laughs> now, what would I do with diamonds on my toes? Never mind. It was a sweet thought. And what are you going to do with your diamonds, Jeff? Me? I'm going to stuff mine in a nice little box I rent at the First National Bank in New York. Oh, now that's real romantic. Uh, you're listening to Port, Mona. Your husband's the man over there. Can't you take a friendly little kiss without trying to make something out of it? Now, how about me, Mona? Don't I get a kiss, too? You don't get a cut of the diamonds, Doctor. Well, if I had known what went with them, I would have insisted on a share. Well, listen to the old boy, a regular Romeo. The launch is ready, sir. Shots, fool! I tell you, I hit him, whoever it was. Both times. More likely you hit Johnson. Huh? He's dead. I couldn't have hit him. I'm not that drunk. I don't think you did. His neck's broken. Well, who did it? Who was that? Get the others. Let's get them to shore.
was it? You wouldn't believe me, Jan. You didn't learn such things at school. I thought it was a man. I saw him walk right into the water. He came down to watch the ship arrive. I didn't expect him so soon. But after what happened to you on the road, I knew they'd be here tonight. Peters? I'm Dr. Eggert. I've been expecting you. This is my great-granddaughter, Jan Peters. How do you do, Miss Peters? This is George Harrison, Mrs. Harrison, and uh, this is our diver, Jeff Clark. One of my men has just been murdered. I know. I heard the voices and the shots. What's going on? I wrote. I warned you of the danger. You mean that voodoo stuff? It was a man. I fired at him. And you hit him. But it didn't help, did it? I want the police. The police will do you no good, Mr. Harrison. They're far away. We'll have to bury the poor man. Tonight? Well, he's dead. May as well bury him. Police want to dig him up later? That's their business. There's no casket. But I'll get someone to sew him up in sailcloth. These are the graves of the first group that came after the diamonds. That was in 1906. They were British. This was a German expedition in 1914, just before the outbreak of war. What I want to know is, how they all die, Mrs. Peters? Another British group tried their luck in 1923. Portuguese in 1928. The first American showed up 10 years later, 1938. the sixth attempt to recover the diamonds. Whose graves are these? The first one is for your dead sailor. The others for the rest of us. She's trying to scare us. She wants the jewels for herself. I've learned that no one who comes for the diamonds can be frightened away. <coughs> Then have the large guest room. According to Eggert, the Susan B is lying in about a hundred feet of water on a sandbar. Say, uh, where is Eggert? He's having a powwow with the old lady. <laughs> Maybe you can find out why the old lady was so anxious to have those graves dug in advance. Now, if the sandbar hasn't moved, it should be about here. Well, this one baffles me. It's, um, it's pre-Christian, of course, but it, um, it doesn't seem to be truly African. You know, it's closer to those figures on Easter Island than anything I've seen. You've picked the prize of the collection quick enough. <laughs> I guess you do know something about Africa. Just who are those people you're with? Well, as I wrote you, I've spent 20 years researching the legends of the Susan B. Mr. Harrison owns the salvage ship. He came for the diamonds. I came for the story. 
I think I'd die happy if I could complete the research on my book. Not that I'm eager to occupy one of those graves. Only fools are afraid of the grave. There are worse things. Bodies around here must be buried quickly, Dr. Eckert. You mean the climate? Mm, no. I don't like to explain to idiots who think I'm in my dotage, but you should understand. Walking dead. You believing them? And so will you before the week is out. My husband, Captain Jeremy Peters of the Susan B. He was one of them. That picture was made over 60 years ago. He looks almost the same today, except for the eyes. I've seen him. You know the story. The Susan B. put in here for trade in 1894. The sailors discovered a temple with a golden cask full of uncut diamonds. They stole the cask. There was a fight and 10 of the sailors were presumed dead, the captain among them. The others returned to the ship with the cask. Then, surprisingly, the 10 missing men appeared. Something happened. The rest of the crew was slaughtered and the ship scuttled in the bay. You think that these 10 men that had been killed returned to their ship? They were dead then, and they're dead now. But they're still guarding those cursed diamonds. One of them killed your sailor tonight. They killed everyone who's come for the diamonds. But they're murderers, your own husband. They're dead, I tell you. They have no morality, no free will. They'll kill anyone who tries to steal the diamonds. But what about you? Oh, don't bother me. They seem to know I don't want their precious treasure. It was more than 50 years ago that I heard rumors that my husband was seen around here, and I came back to find out. Slowly, I pieced the story together. I built this house. You want to be with him, with your husband, this dead man? I came to help him return to dust to find his eternal rest. But how? How can you do that? <coughs> cool woman again. <coughs> Jack! stay. George, you saw that thing. I came here for the diamonds. I'm staying and so are the rest of you. But if you knew there'd be all this trouble, people killed, why did you let them come? I didn't let them do anything. Edgar wrote and told me they were coming. I don't own the diamonds or the bay. But you wanted them to come. Yes, I want them to find the diamonds and then destroy them. Only when the diamonds are destroyed. Will your grandfather be able to rest? 
destroy them? Do you think Harrison is the kind of a man who would destroy the diamonds after going to all the trouble of finding them? Throw them away because of an old wives' tale about men who died 60 years ago but aren't dead? If they ever find the diamonds, they'll be glad to destroy them. I know what I have to do. And this time, there'll be an end to the diamonds and an end to the walking dead. zombie out here? I understand they don't smoke. They're afraid of fire. And you know all about them, too. Only what my grandmother says. And you believe her? No. Then who broke into the house tonight? Who killed Johnson? I wish I knew. I wanted to ask you to leave with the others. Give it up before any more are killed. Do I look like I'm afraid of zombies? Johnson is dead. So are many others buried behind the house. It's not worth the risk. Oh, yes, it is. If those diamonds are half of what they're cracked up to be, my share may come to a million dollars. That's a lot of loot. What is it worth if you're dead? Oh, look, Miss Peters. I may be a dumb diver, but I got an A in arithmetic at PS 81. That's New York. And this is the way it figures. Usually, as a diver, I make a hundred bucks a day. And if I'm lucky, I work three days out of every week. That's 15 grand a year. Now, do you know how many years I'd have to work to make a million? 67 years. You better go back to school, learn how much 60 years of life is worth, or 50, or 20, or even 10. <laughs> All right, I'll make you a promise. If I get that million, or even half, I'll give up my dangerous occupation. I'll never dive into anything deeper than a swimming pool. Or if, uh, if that makes you nervous, I'll, uh, I'll stick to very dry martinis. Not funny? I didn't think you'd listen. There's something else. Tonight, when Sam was driving me home, we hit one of those men, not a mile down the road, we hit him hard, ran over him. We must have killed him. I'd like to find out. So would I. Can we get the car? They're supposed to be afraid of flares. Even if I agreed with you and wanted to quit, it's not my show. It's Harrison's equipment and Harrison's money. That's why he waltzes off with three quarters of whatever we find. Right there. Just ahead, I think I see something. It was right over there. Be careful. About here, maybe a bit down the road. Let's look. Remains of your headlamp. You must have hit something right here. What is it? Seaweed. Water and seaweed. You suppose he could have come from the bay? It just suddenly appeared on the road. Facing toward the road. So he did come from the direction of the bay. He must have been hit back there where we found the glass and the button. He was thrown a few yards, run over down there. Let's go back and see what we can pick up that thing.
Jan. You take one side of the road and I'll take the other. See if you can find some more footprints. Jeff! He just picked himself up and walked away. I'd like to follow these. Tonight? No. I'll get something to mark the place. We'll come back with the others in the morning. Can you hear me? Try to get away while I back him down with these flares. What'd you think of it? I remembered how that old lady drove off that joker last night with the torch. I didn't know where the girl was taking me. 
I figured she was leading me in for a setup. So I grabbed the very gun from the locker. You say this mausoleum in the middle of the jungle is about uh, 40 by 20 feet. And no running water or central heating. If you like, we'll pack a picnic lunch and walk over there. Do you think you could find it again? Oh, I should. You kept me up all night making notes. <laughs> you know, Doc, you're going to have to cut me in on the royalties from your book. I think you were right the first time. I'll give you odds, little Miss Sweetness and Light was leading you into a trap. You can bet that she had that old witch at the bottom of what's going on. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, Miss Sweetness. Warm milk, Margaret. I want to thank you for saving Jan's life, Mr. Clark. She's very precious to me, and I will be always grateful. Now you got a friend for life, Jeff. We all die in good time, Mrs. Harrison. There's a grave waiting for all of us. You old hag! You're dead already. You just don't have sense enough to lie down. Shut up! Well, it's true. She, she's at the bottom of what's going on around here, and you all know it. I'm sorry, Mrs. Peters, but, uh... You see, she learned her manners as a hostess in Eddie's Front Street Saloon. As she's... I was saying, I'm grateful. And I'll do whatever I can to help you recover the diamond. Thanks, but it won't make any difference now. You see, I've decided to give it up. What? You can't quit like this. I practically taught you the business. You should have taught me the business end of the business. Then I'd be up on deck taking a sun bath and getting 75% while you went below and played footsies with the fishes. We made a deal. I've sunk 30,000 into this. Practically everything I've got. Get yourself another boy. Do the diving yourself. Nobody told me there'd be a crew of cutthroats pushing up the odds. And I don't care who's behind them. Okay. I'll give you another 5%. Maybe he's right, George. We ought to quit. This place gives me the creep. One more word out of you, now. What do you do? Put me in irons. What do you want? I did some arithmetic last night, Harrison. You know, 50% isn't hard to resist. I hope you live to collect it. Oh, but I intend to. You see, I'm counting on you to keep me alive. At least until after we get the diamonds. We're losing the whole morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. You all right? So you're going ahead? Yeah. Harrison talked me into it. Ask Mrs. Peters. But I tell you, I buried that knife in his throat. So you missed a vital spot. Okay, but I should have got a little blood out of that eight-inch plate. Do you believe in the walking dead, Dr. Eggert? All I know is what I've read. What's it say in the books, Doc? Are they supposed to be good swimmers? Well, they wouldn't have to breathe. Well, that's my weakness. I have to breathe. Try to remember that, Harrison. Any last words? Just find the diamond. I'm only going to try and locate the cabin. Fifteen minutes. Don't get yourself killed, Jeff. It would be such a waste. Can you hear me? Telephone okay? Air pressure okay? All right, let's go. Ready. 
75 feet. How's the leak? No words. You want to come up? No, not yet. More away. I see something right under me. Easy. I'm looking right into the hole. We're in luck. I think I can walk right into the hole. Maybe I can get in right now. You want to try? Yeah. dive at all. It's less than a hundred feet. But why go down? You're not in position. I'm not gonna let him get his hands on those diamonds without me being there. I see it. I see the safe. Jeff! What's happened? Air pressure reads zero. Is he free? Can you haul him in? He seems to be coming up, unless... Unless what? Unless the cable snapped. Well, why don't you go down and see? Well, this is the quickest way. Keep him rolling. to get him to a doctor. The nearest doctor is at the Angel Mission. That's five hours driving each way. I do the doctoring around here. Over my dead body. That's his breathing. If we don't do something to help that quick, he may not come out of it. I'll fix something for him. You're not going to let her feed him anything, are you? What do you think? Well, I don't think she's a murderess, but... Uh... But she's out of her head. I don't know if he's breathing at all now. This will stimulate his breathing. Give him about an ounce every hour. Well, it's not that we distrust you, Mrs. Peters, but... Put it down. Give it to him or not, as you please. Wait! It's potent, but it won't hurt you. A 
I'll let you know if there's any change. Okay, Florence Nightingale. Call me when you're ready to go off shift. Get me. Ah. I just can't stand the excitement. Exotic Africa. Wild animals and tropical night. Here I am teaching a professor how to play blackjack. Uh, I have 21. Well, okay. So he owes you another thousand matchsticks. Relax. Well, why doesn't she tell us what's going on? She just told you a half an hour ago. Sleeping peacefully and breathing normally. What do you want, a bulletin every 10 minutes? Well, I'm going to see for myself. And don't start any trouble. How do you feel? No, no, don't stop. Yes, I finally made it. Soft clouds, golden stairways, trumpets, and angels. Not a chance, Jeff. You're in Africa. And from where I sit, it looks a lot more like the other place. Why didn't you call us when he wakened? He just did. Oh, sure. What goes on here? Are you getting time and a half on this job? Why didn't you call us? I told you I didn't want any trouble. What do you expect a phony caveman act to get you? I told you to stay away from him. Now I'm going to give you the only kind of lesson you seem to understand. <laughs> You'll have to come back. How's Jeff? Oh, he's okay. I talked to him after a while about what happened at the wreck. They say of the walking dead that their souls can find no eternal rest, that they exist in torment. If only people could find peace of soul and mind while they're alive. You've had that fire going for two hours now. If Mona could see it, she could have found a way back. But you're inside that tangle you can't see very far. She wouldn't have ventured into the jungle by herself. They have her, I'm sure. We'll have to go after her, then. To the graveyard? I'll go, too. Sure you want to go along? Well, I'd like to help. This won't be any sightseeing expedition. If they've had her this long, it won't do any good. They'll get you all. Should be right about here. I clocked it on my way back last night. You want to use the very gun again? You want a gun, Doc? No, thanks. I'll take an extra flashlight. All right, let's go. Here's the path. Hart and Johnny, you two bring up the rear. Keep a close watch out on both sides. Doc, you stay in the middle. You stay close behind me. Don't fire unless you have to. All right, let's go. Side of the boulder. The old lady tells me this was a European cemetery for the people who dug the diamonds a hundred years ago. All right, Johnny, you two stay here. Any of them show up, try the flares. You want to come with us? I'll go. Okay, you carry the gasoline.
she's dead. Maybe not. We'll get her. Let's figure on getting out of here, too. Doc, empty the gas on both sides of the door. All right. Okay, now, keep your eyes on him. I'll be right behind you. I'll try and hold him back with these flares. She is dead. Let's get out of here! I'm so glad. She's as cold as... She is all right, isn't she? She hasn't said a word. Maybe she's been drugged or in shock. I think you'd better get her to bed. She's dead. The wife is dead, Mr. Harrison. You saw her walk in here. You all saw her walk. Look at her eyes. Not breathing. She's cold as death. I won't listen to that crazy talk. You hear me now? No more of it. I'm going to put her to bed. Not in this house. Please, Grandmother. If we can take her out to the ship. No. I know this is your house, but I'm not going to move her tonight. Now, if you're afraid, you get out. I'm not afraid for myself. I'm afraid for you, for all of you. Miss Peters, would you help me put her to bed? Of course. What about us? Let them stay. First bedroom. We may need them. Mona. Why don't you close your eyes and get some sleep? Jeff, you up? How's Mona? Uh, no change. You willing to go down tomorrow? Well, the safe's right there. I figure one more dive and we should be able to get to it. Why? You want to pull out? I ought to think about Mona. I ought to get it to a doctor.
ないぜい！hinges. You know, I think I can get into her with a scout knife. This stuff is burning like firewood. I'll have the first hinge off in a minute.
How much longer? Just one more minute. I've got the hinges off. I've got it. I need 10 seconds to get out of here. I can't hold them off. I'm going up. Take me up. Take me up. Send the diver stage down. waiting to jump me. I want to make sure my lines are clear. Want to give me the word? Start winding away like mad. We understand, Jeff. Give us the word. It worked! Where's Harris? He's just breaking surface now. They're all over him. Four or five of them. Use the flare. down the diver stage. Lost a lot of blood. He's in his cabin. We're running out of flares. Save him. Look, they're coming on board. Get the torches and the kerosene. Yes. Let's see if we can keep it. Take it. The cabin lock yourself in.
lighter fluid, cleaning fluid, anything that'll burn. Yeah, in the desk drawer. Give them those lousy diamonds! Don't anybody try that! You got a better idea? Yeah, we'll fight our way out. Who's gonna carry you while I do the fighting? I'll manage. You're in great shape for running. No, I'll be all right in a minute. I'll take this and make a break for it. If I get through, I'll head for shore in the launch. They'll follow me, and that'll give you a chance to get away. Don't try it, Jeff. Not so bad. Take it. He's not trying to steal a diamond. Shut up! But he saved your life and mine. That's more than you could do on your bad leg. I know him better than you. Take out that dinghy. You're safe. I was so Later. worried. I saw that. I've got things to do. Come on. Listen, there's a whole flock of them after this. I'll be here in a few minutes, and they're playing pretty rough. And I don't want to be around here when they get here. And I don't want Jan around, or you either, Mrs. Peters. I figure we can get into the car, take Mona, and clear out. We can meet up with Harrison at Dakar. Well, I'd split my end of the take with you. I figure you've got something coming after all these years. That is, if there is a take. I'm still not sure we found the diamonds. How do you get this open? It's older than the pyramids. They didn't have any springs or screws, of course, but they did know something about levers. Usually. Give me a scarf, quick. Get the launch and start it up. We'll be going back to the boat in two minutes. If any of them show up, hold them off with the torches. <coughs> Girl, bring me that chest. Tell if there's any funny business, I'll shoot you for trying to steal the diamonds and deserting us while we we're under attack. Well, that's not true. He took all the risk himself. Listen, Harrison. I haven't the time. Phoebe and Johnny are getting steam up. Mike and Tony are waiting at the launch. I'm taking Mona and the diamonds out of here. I just wrote a new deal. Give it to him. Maybe you got it open. How are you gonna know? Oh, please don't, you'll ruin it. I'll find a way. If you follow me, I'll kill you. But the diamonds should really be yours. You found them, you saved them. Thanks, Doc. Come here.
We have to make a run for the launch. Understand? Come on! Go on, get in! So fast. Let's get him inside. But you don't even know for sure if they want the diamonds. Maybe they just wanted the chest. We could have seen the end of them. They want the diamonds. They'll be back when they find the chest is empty. <laughs> but how could I destroy them even if I wanted to? Cast them to the wind. Scatter them over the sea so that no man will ever find them. Come with me, Janet. We can be on the ship in a few minutes and out in the bay in ten more. <laughs> where will they catch us? In New York? No matter where you go, they'll follow you. Well, I'll get rid of the diamonds fast. I'll turn them over for cash. They'll be sold in every capital in the world. <laughs> what would they do? Pick at all the jewelry stores in Fifth Avenue? Oh, look, Jan, I want you with me. I want you to enjoy the money, too. I want you to marry me. I think I'd like that, Jeff. I can't go. I can't leave like this. You mean you believe all this, too? That if I jump the diamonds, they'll disappear? Yes, it's true. They'll stop walking the earth. They'll find their eternal rest. The diamonds must be destroyed. You can't rob them of this. Jan. She believes. She spent a lifetime believing. You can't rob her of this. Well, I can't throw them away. Maybe I wish I could. I'm going to take them with me. And you're coming with me, too. Both of you. I can't leave you behind, not where they're still prowling around. I'm staying right here. But you can't stay here now. It's too dangerous. I'm sorry, but if I had to I'll carry you. I believe you would. We don't have any time, Mrs. Peters. I'll put you off wherever you say. If you like, I'll arrange to get you back here later. Help her in. What are we waiting for? Please, not yet. We're safe enough now. Captain Peter, must you go on? Okay, take them. The diamonds, Mrs. Peters. They're yours. Do what you want with them. Jeremy Peters, at long last. Probably never be rich again.
When Columbia Pictures released this movie, they released it on a double bill with another horror flick called The Man Who Turned to Stone. Both movies were written by Bernard Gordon, but if you were paying attention to the credits, you saw the writing credit was not given to Bernard Gordon. Instead, somebody named Raymond T. Marcus got the screen credit. That's because Bernard Gordon was a victim at that time of the blacklist. And during the 1950s, he worked under his pen name, Raymond T. Marcus. He borrowed that actually from a real person. Raymond T. Marcus is a man who owned a plastics company where Gordon worked when he couldn't get script writing jobs. And Gordon's former boss gave him permission to use his name for movies that Gordon wrote during that period, seven in all. And it would be six years before Gordon's real name was again used in screen credits. And that was for the 1963 film, 55 Days at Peking. Don't go away, we have more zombies ahead. Up next, it's a movie from 1968 and from the imagination of George Romero, which has gone on to become one of the biggest cult horror movies of all time.